Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Todd Banner. Well, I've been really pretty busy lately, so I haven't been able to get a video up uh, in a while, but um, I have been working on a project for a few months now, and it has just all come to fruition. So I'm gonna show a video, and, and just to be forewarned, this is not a short video, this is um, about 50 minutes. So I suggest you, hey, put some coffee on, uh, block out some time. If you need to come back and look later, hey, do that. But I think if you're a photographer or you are really interested in photography and the history of photography, you will want to watch this video. So I'll give you a little background on this. Uh, and I did a video a year or two ago about my friend Howard Simmons. And Howard is another photographer. And I met Howard when we moved to Oak Park. So we moved into our, our house in 1996, and Howard and Marva were, were our neighbors two doors down. And, and Howard was one of the first people to come over and say hi and welcome to the neighborhood. And I found out that we were both photographers, and you know, a, a very good friendship blossomed. Um, so Howard uh, was one of the first black photojournalists in Chicago. So he uh, was a photographer for the Sun-Times. Uh, he also, after that, was a commercial photographer. So he's very experienced. But he and three other black photographers were among the first black photojournalists in Chicago. So it was Howard, uh, Ovi Carter, who shot for the Tribune, and Ovi won a Pulitzer Prize for uh, work he did in Africa for the Tribune. Bob Black, who was a Sun-Times photographer, Chicago Sun-Times photographer, and John H. White, who was a Sun-Times photographer and also a Pulitzer Prize winner. And so the four of them actually got together in 1973 to do an exhibition of their work at uh, the Southside Art Center in Chicago, and it was called Through Eyes of Blackness. Fast forward to 2019, Howard calls me and says, hey, I'm getting together with O.V., Bob, and John. We're going to have uh, lunch, and we'd really like you to come and take some photos of us take, uh, at lunch. So I went, and I grabbed a bunch of shots. Here's, here's one of them. And uh, from then on, they, I think they kept more in touch than they had been, because I think they hadn't been in touch for quite some time. And they decided to do another exhibition. In the meantime, Howard and I were talking, and you know, these guys are not young. And Howard's 80, you wouldn't think, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, he's, he's in really great shape. Um, I mean, Howard assists me on, on shoots, and you know, he's, he's as strong, if not stronger than I am. But I was talking with Howard, and I said, you know, you guys, your experience is really amazing and important, and you really ought to think about sitting down, the four of you, and talking, and we record it, we do a video, and just talk about how you all got into photography, what it was like shooting uh, from the late 60s and through the 70s in Chicago. You know, in which, which Chicago, although it is a northern city, has had a history of racism. Um, there's, there's no question about it. So we got the four of them together at uh, Howard's Oak Park condominium, mic them up, some remote lavalier mics. Our friend Tony Clark uh, has a very nice Nikon Z9. We use that as second camera. Thank you to Tony. When we were recording it, I was I was using headphones and listening to what was coming through the uh, the camera, uh, but I was focused on hearing issues. You know, if a train went by, if that was an issue, it turns out not so much. Phone rang a couple times, uh, so I wasn't really listening to what they were saying. And then I got home and I watched and I put the video together and then I listened. And I really think, uh, again, if you are a photographer, if you're interested in photojournalism, if you're interested in the history of photography, you're going to like this video. So again, uh, block out some time for it. Oh, I should mention that Howard, Ovi, Bob, and John are working on 
uh, a new exhibition. They did have a one-day exhibition of work at the Southside Art Center, which is where the original 1973 ex exhibition was, but they are working on finding a venue in Chicago to do a more extended uh, exhibition of their work. So without further ado, here is Through Eyes of Blackness. Well guys, here we are after all these years. Let's introduce ourselves. Howard Simmons. O.V. Carter. Bob Black. John H. White. Okay. <laughs> and we have a lot to talk about after all these years. And starting off at the newspapers, and we just have a discussion about life, photography, and how it's affected us and how we came together. I'm really blessed to have your friendship and how we have um, moved along. I just turned 80. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> so we're just going to talk about photography and uh, what it's meant to us. And Ovi suggested that I put down, that we put down about four things that might be of interest to us and those who might see this video. I remember that time when we actually got together the first time at a restaurant here in Oak Park, and that was a wonderful experience. So we have to do that more because time is moving on. So I could start with photography and what it's meant to me. You know, your job actually can mold your life. It can mold your friendships. It can mold how you move along in life. And it's really affected me in so many ways. And it's a wonderful thing when you, when you think about that. Because a lot of folks have professions and jobs that they go to with the whole objective of leaving the job, going home. So photography is introduced me to you guys and you can't be more fortunate than that. I remember when I met Bob, you know, I came to Chicago to work for Ebony Magazine and uh, I didn't want to go to a newspaper because I, I met Bob, I saw this brother uh, in a, what was it? It was a supermarket checkout line. Oh, it was in the checkout line. Checkout line. We were getting ready. He was behind me. Oh, and I saw <laughs> this brother with a Leica. And I said, this guy has got to be a pro. You know, and especially in those years, you didn't see brothers with a Leica. So I introduced myself, and that's how our friendship began. And so that made the difference in my career as I, because I left Ebony. Um, I, I, I liked working for Ebony, but... I was getting married, so I approached John Johnson, as, uh, <laughs> as you know, and because um, Bob had suggested that I come to the Sun Times, but I was working for Ebony, and uh, <laughs> I, I think, you know what's happening, I'm making this more about my career as opposed to our just talking. So Bob, when uh, Bob told me, man, you should come to the Sun Times. I wanted to work for Ebony, you know, Ebony <laughs> magazine, so I uh, asked Mr. Johnson for a raise. I said, uh, you know, Mrs. Johnson, I was, uh, I'm getting married in a few months, so, you know, uh, and I, I wonder if I get a raise, and his response is pretty, <laughs> pretty straightforward. No. But he didn't say, well, you know, you could stay with us a little while, you know, a few, a few years, or at least a couple years. He said, no. And I said, I couldn't, well, what could you come come back and say after that? But just no. And I, I worked really hard at Ebony for all the photographers. There weren't that many, but I was doing more work than any photographer on the staff. And uh, in nine months, I was there for nine months, I had 40 
out of town assignments. So I got on the phone and called Bob. I said, Bob, I think I'd like to talk to you about Sun Times. So that's that's why I left him. And, and see, that was thanks to Bob. So we're still friends. Well, you got to say, though, working at JPC was, was an experience, I'm sure. It, it was. One that you'll never forget. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I'm thankful to, to um, Mr. Johnson for, for hiring me because that. Interestingly, that was my first, I don't know if you guys know this, did you know that was my first job as a professional photographer? No. I had never no. had an assignment. Mm. I, I was working in the lab at an um, advertising agency in, in the mm-hmm. lab, and I worked at a, for an industrial photographer uh, in the lab. Mm-hmm. So I had never really had an assignment. I, I would shoot mm-hmm. all the time on my lunch breaks from mm-hmm. both places. I would go out and just shoot whatever I could. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the... Um, advertising agency would let me print all I wanted and I could print 16 by 20 color prints for nothing and print them and mount them mm-hmm. so when I uh, went to Chicago to you had something to show yeah I had mm-hmm. something to show and, mm-hmm. uh, so uh, when I went in I didn't call I didn't have a resume <laughs> so I just uh, walked in the door and I wow went. I was fortunate, but think about that. That was, mm. that was a fairy tale. Okay. Yeah, I always yeah. say that because I yeah. walked in the door. Um, and did any of you guys know Alex Poinsett? He oh, was, I, knew, I knew Alex. Know, yeah. Yeah, he I was a writer. That, that's who came down to see me. Okay. That was one of those. Sorry, you know, we, yeah. we we're not hiring anybody. Yeah. But yeah. He, he liked my portfolio, so then I got to see Herb Nipson. Okay. And, okay. Um, well, right up the ladder. Well, yeah, Herb Nipson, <laughs> Herb Nipson said, uh, "Come in, come in tomorrow, and you can meet Mr. Johnson." Oh wow! And that's, that's how it started. You went all the way to the top. Yeah, went all the way to the top, and then when uh, I think about that, when I went home, I said, "I got hired by Ebony." And so that's when it started. Yeah, that was an experience, and, and Ebony puts you in places that you would not have been in no. otherwise. I saw uh, flying across the country. Yes. I mean, just out the box. That's yes. And you got to know people that are public figures in their own right yes. on a personal level. Yes. They got to know yes. people and yes. shoot folks just all across the country. Yeah. So that was quite uh-huh. something. That's right. And I, I, I never thought about that. I said, here I am. I had never, I never had assignments. I'd never shot anybody. I came out to the lab and went to Ebony. Mm-hmm. How did you start? John well, White. I, well, I was thinking about what you were saying as I was looking at the, the, the life's map of that. And I'm thinking something my father said was that, uh, and I think about all of our lives, uh, let the world be your playground. Hmm. And the camera has been our passport to the world, to the news. We've got this front seat to it, humanity. Hmm, I like humanity. that. You know, the rich, the poor, the ordinary, the people, you know, everybody that has a heartbeat. And, 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 and they've been our subject and they've been our friends and we've been there we've been that could do it for 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 a time that's not yet. And, I, and, 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 and I'm gonna answer your, I'm gonna respond to your question, you know, how I started this. But I, I think about uh, you know there's GPS, everybody's familiar with GPS, you know, everybody uses GPS, you know, you know, keep it. But the most important thing is the compass of life. The compass, the compass is always going. And you think of the ingredients and the things you've done, and that's a lesson in itself. For, for, for you know, uh, there, there's action, and there's inaction, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, what you said is a textbook lesson. And the lives, you look at the lives of each person here, it's a textbook lesson. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the compass of life, you know, I look, I look at, the, the, the brothers, and there's not there's, there's a wordness about us, not a sadness, a wordness. And the camera, this thing called photography, this visual, uh, has been a gift for us. But hundreds of years from now, it'll be just as fresh to those seeing it. I mean, somebody said, put up an iPhone and get that, but they go get the image, they go get the image of you to the Dr. King, the things of that nature. And so we're serving this old hymn that says, uh, uh, to serve this present age, they call it to fulfill 
but also doing that, you're serving ages and generations of that mm. that mm-hmm. That's not yet. And when I look at each of us, I mean, each person, mm-hmm. each person, the personality, these, uh, I, I, I see a divine compass in that, where how we came together, we came together. Not only we came together, but we're still together. Yeah. yeah and the, the, and, and the bond and the law is, 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 is by some say, it's authentic. Yeah, yeah, uh, that that's, that's very true. This all started with Howard, who decided that uh, the four of us should get together and produce uh, an exhibit of our work. Uh, and this happened back in the early 1970s. 73, I think. 73, yeah. We had just I I'd only been there oh maybe three years by the, by that time. Really? Yeah, that's because I started in 68 at the Sun Times. That's how I started. But before that time I worked for the Chicago Daily Defender. I was on staff there for a while so before I went to the Sun Times. And before that <laughs> I did a lot of freelance gigs uh, for Johnson Publishing and then really? everybody else too. Okay. Uh, and before that I started my journey in the photographic medium in my church. Oh, okay. My church had a camera club among the older people in the club in the in the church. Yeah, they were they were you know for for the standard at that time they were pretty well to do and they were a lot of them retired from their regular jobs so they had money mm-hmm. and so they were they were they had these cameras that we only could dream about or see in, a, in an ad in a magazine or something. You didn't think you'd ever see, know somebody that actually had these things. And so when some of the members of the club found out I had, a, had an inkling that I was interested, then they took me under their wing. Oh, and the rest is history. I, I took off. There was, a, there was a young man there. His, his name was Bobby. And he had all of the gadgets. He had the Nikon's. He had the every. He had a ruler flex, uh, uh, the four by five speed grab. Mm-hmm. He had all that stuff. That wasn't since then, was it? No, no, no. The Bobby oh. that came later. Okay. Uh, that, that came later. Uh, but uh, uh, he also knew the, the understood the chemistry and the physics. Of photography, so he was able to tell me and teach me about what happens in the chemistry in the dark room, and also the phenomena that you would see, uh, even in movies. Like I would notice that sometimes they show a movie where uh, the wagon train is going, and it looks like the wagon wheel is turning in the opposite direction. I used to wonder about that. I asked him. He said, "Oh yeah." He explained it to me. I don't remember now, but he explained it to me. I said, oh, it makes sense. Uh, and then. He allowed me, he had enough confidence in me to allow me to take home some of his real expensive equipment mm. Mm. just to use, to play with, to get accustomed to. And of course, my mother, uh, when she saw me come in the house with this stuff, she said, What is it? Uh, her name was Elaine. Uh, what 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 do you what do you got this stuff for? I can't do nothing. I can't buy that if something happens to it. So she'd get on the phone and call Bobby, and Bobby would you know explain to her very calmly. He said, Elaine, don't worry, he's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. And so I'd come home with all this stuff. You know, I'd have it maybe for a couple few days, and I'd see him again, and bring it back to him. But that was how I started getting accustomed to being around people who understood and so they helped me understand and uh, and so I, and then, then I started uh, people in the church realized I, I could take pictures pretty decently uh, they, but they also knew they could hire me rather than hire a big professional guy mm-hmm. and so you know they, and they gave me an opportunity to learn and everything and so I did I got I did weddings of the, some of the members daughters and whatnot and uh, and then when I w- went to school at my high school uh, we had some, uh, some teachers who were into photography and so they would teach me a lot of things and so that's mm-hmm. and then I just absorbed every bit that I could I could get and of course uh, 
Bobby Orr was the guy who turned me on to Gordon Parks. I didn't even know he existed. Mm -hmm. But he told me, he said, yeah, you know, Life Magazine has a black photographer on the staff. I said, oh, who's that? Because at that time, that was unheard of. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, well, so the minute I could get to a Life Magazine each week, because it came out weekly, I would look in the masthead, first of all, to see if his name is there. So I said, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay. Then I'd go through the magazine to see what, I, what he's done. And um, from that point on, he was my North Star on everything photojournalistic. And I had no idea how I would end up being a photojournalist. I just had no idea. I just know that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was nobody except him, and he was too far away, and he was in a whole different category, but there was nobody local that I could look to that would, I could say, well, maybe I'll get there one day. And uh, fortunately, Bobby Singstack. Oh, so that's son, how you Yeah. You this, I met Bobby Singstack when the Defender uh, had a feature on their weekend edition that was uh, where it was a page, it was a page dedicated to young people, uh, teenagers, and, um, and and even the uh, the page was edited and written by teenagers, you know, for teenagers, but they didn't have a photographer in that same age group. Uh, usually, the, the the adult photographers that were on staff took care of the pictures. But then I had an opportunity to meet one of their staff photographers. And again, it was at the church. You know, mm -hmm. in those days, well, local churches would have events and affairs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the defender, they would have the defender come out and take a picture of the organization that was doing it. And I happened to be on this committee at my church. Mm -hmm. And they came out. And the guy that came out, I knew his name from his byline in the paper. And I said, hey, Mr. Mr. Lyles, uh, I see your stuff in the paper all the time. You know, I, pump, I pumped him up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, yeah. I said, yeah. Yeah, I said, uh, now they got this teenage page there uh, with all these teenage uh, writers and reporters, but they don't have a photographer. I didn't see anybody that they listed as a photographer. Uh, you think you think maybe I, I could come down there and do that? He said, well, yeah, well, why don't you come on down and talk to the woman who, who handles that, that section? And he told me who she was. Her name was Alberta Myers. I'll never forget her. So I went down, met her. And she said, oh, yeah, we could use you. We don't have a photographer in that age group. So you just come on board. And that's when I met Bobby Singstack. <laughs> he hadn't started shooting yet. Really? No, oh. he hadn't. But he was mm -hmm. interested. He was, you know, he wanted mm -hmm. to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, so he asked me to show him the work, the ropes and everything. Now, so his, you got Bobby started. Yeah, I got him started. So I got him started. Yeah. And, uh, so, but his dad, of course, was able to get him all the, all the top, top of the line stuff. And so, so I was able to even guide him on that. Oh, you know, that you don't need everything, but here's what you need to really get, mm -hmm. get going, you know. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, he uh, he took to it really well, and uh, once he got the hang of it, he was off and running. He was the one who uh, turned me on to getting on the staff uh, because I was working in a as a tech up there at uh, uh, Northwestern's medical school, and, but I wanted to do something in photography. Mm -hmm. So I just happened to pick up the phone one day and I called Bobby. I said, "Hey, Bobby." Uh, uh, you guys got any openings down there for the staff? And he said, yeah, I think so. <laughs> so he come back to me and said, yeah, they, they're looking for a staff photographer. You think you can come down? I said, yeah, I can come down. And so I came down and they hired me. Uh, a guy named Dave Potter was the managing editor at the time. Mm. And they hired me right there on the spot. And I was the only staff guy. Bobby, he was he was kind of like a photographer at large. He did whatever he wanted to do, whatever he wanted to do it, you know, which was great for him. And um, so I, I was the only staff guy at the time. And later we hired another guy, but uh, I was mm. I was the man in charge. And and they gave me some latitude because I was able to do things that normally 
I, I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. How long were you there? I was there year? about about three years. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, I was there about three years, and uh, I learned a whole lot of stuff mm -hmm. from those. I learned how to <laughs> speak of special developing techniques, uh, how to develop film by inspection. Because I saw these guys oh, doing it. Wow, that <laughs> inspection. Yeah. I forgot about yeah. them doing it. I never pre soaked it. 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 water before. <laughs> that, and, they, and, they, and they would say it gets that fine grade. Well, yeah, what, what, what yeah. it would do, it would, it would swell the emulsion first. Right, right. And then it right. allowed the developer to get in there and go to work right away okay, okay. and then the next thing I would do after I finish with developing uh, <laughs> I'd take it out of the developer and put it in a tank of water Mm -hmm. Just let it sit there. Okay. Don't do nothing. Don't work. Don't rinse it off. Just let mm -hmm. it sit there. Mm -hmm. And what that did was uh, it allowed detail to build up in the, in the shadows. shadows. Right. And it's cut off detail in the highlights. Just shut it down. And it just it can and it can stay in the water as long as you wanted it to. You don't read that in the textbook. <laughs> Here's the textbook. Well, I pre-soaked my film. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I pre-soaked and I and I pre and I, I post-soaked it. <laughs> and uh, then after I, I had it in, in the water after development, it was over. And oh, I might might be there half hour. Mm -hmm. I just go back, take it out, put it in the hypo. You know, in the fixer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stop bath. You didn't use stop bath. No, I didn't. Ne never use really? stop bath. I just rinsed it off. Oh, I, I just rinsed. Stop the, I just rinsed off the rest, mm -hmm. and then I put it in in the in the in the uh, fixer. fixer. Yeah. It, it would be just as cool as he doing that uh, <laughs> as he's talking about. It. Yeah. This film is film is You know. Oh my God, I'll be dying. <laughs> but you needed time to do that. What kind of results were you looking for? Okay. Uh, uh, the way I did it was that if I had a contrasty subject mm -hmm. with, with, with really heavy highlights, it would stop the development in the highlights and so that the highlights would be transparent. They wouldn't mm -hmm. be all blown Black. out. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and, the, and the shadows would still continue to work slowly, with the, but they would never block up. You know, it's, and then after a while, you just take it out the water, it kind of rinse off the little excess uh, water that was there, and put it in the fixer. And when you look at that negative, it was like something you've never seen before. Which produced a fantastic photograph. Oh yeah. Yes, it did. Because uh, I'll tell this story again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of your photographs that really got me interested in photojournalism. Okay. I had no interest in, at all in it before then. But I saw a picture of yours in the newspaper. Uh, I didn't even read the newspapers, you know, I mean, it just uh -huh. so happened it was sitting on the instructor's desk. You know, okay. And I saw it okay. in the Sun Times there and opened it up. And you had covered a, a memorial for Dr. King's uh, oh, death. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh -huh. so the, the previous night. But the picture just uh, spoke to me. I don't even remember exactly what it was now, but it was just the the, the tonality in it, you know. The, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, it was a black and white photograph. Uh -huh. But uh, it caught my attention, and I, I thought, well, this is something that I would like to do, you know, mm -hmm. take pictures like this, you know. Mm -hmm. And that just, I didn't think too much more about it. I didn't think to look you up or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that incident uh, stayed with me. As a matter of fact, at that time, uh, we were talking before about uh, uh, how we became interested in photojournalism and how we got our jobs and everything. Uh, we all knew that uh, there were no jobs per se for black photographers in the newspaper business so that was the thought never even entered my mind you know mm -hmm. that I would you know, ever work for a newspaper mm -hmm. but you were working for one mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but still I couldn't make that connection for myself because I had other ambitions I wanted okay. to do something besides you know this uh, but um, uh, Lo and behold, I mean, I had an opportunity to, uh, a few months later, to uh, uh, mm, get a position at the Chicago Tribune. It's a long story. Yeah. But uh, I kind of know the story. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. Yeah. But uh, it was a very fortunate story for me because my my life was 
careening off into a whole different uh, career uh, lane? Well, so many things were happening uh, at, at that time, but uh, I just wanted to, 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 uh, to, to let you know again, Bob, because I've told you this before, that it was your one of your photographs that really caught my attention, and I cannot remember today what it was. It happened to be the mood of the picture, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. what it, what 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 was being conveyed as far as the uh, the the uh, available light, the tonality, and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it just was a very strong, emotionally strong uh, mm -hmm. image for me, and. Um, I didn't even take pictures. I didn't even have a camera. <laughs> I, I, didn't even have a, I didn't even have a 35 millimeter camera. I had never taken a picture with a 35 millimeter camera before. Not wow. ever, you know, before Boy. I started working for the Tribune. <laughs> you know, so that's a, again, that's a that's a whole a whole other story there. But um, I just sort of stumbled into photojournalism. journalism. Well, yeah, I did. I just stumbled into you it. You stumbled, know. but you walked right on in there. <laughs> yeah, you see what happened. They sent you around the world <laughs> to, 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 to document <laughs> hunger in the world. Well, you know what true. the results of that was? A <laughs> Pulitzer Prize. Pulitzer that's Prize. True. It's right, right there, right out the box. That's true. So. I, I was very fortunate. <laughs> but you know, I like to think that uh, uh, I had other career options, and I think I would have. Uh, been successful at a number of other things as well. You know what I mean? Because we have high standards for ourselves. Well, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But not not to take anything away from 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 what I was able to achieve as a photojournalist. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, as again, I, I stumbled into it. I was headed in another direction. Mm -hmm. But if I had gone in another direction, I would have been just as happy. You know, oh, what well, I'm saying. That's you good. Know? That's oh, good. Yeah. yeah without uh, a doubt. My, my whole my whole life and desire was to be a photojournalist. And I didn't know uh, any other thing that I could possibly do, and because I, I was really, really uh, right. zeroed in on this, and right. I didn't know how I was going to get there, right? Uh, because it, it's like you just mentioned. I didn't know there was no place to get to. Well, you know yes, I mean? right, yes, because there, there, there was no, there were no black photographers. Th there uh, was, uh, there uh, was. I'm not talking about you know my. Uh, introduction by way of you in that mm. photograph, but mm -hmm. I'm talking about mm -hmm. just before then. Oh, know, we don't know. Oh, it no. was something you just didn't, 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 didn't think about. I had just, no idea how that was going to happen. Right. And it just, for me, uh, it happened because I developed a relationship with many of the photographers that worked at the downtown papers. Because mm -hmm. during the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. when it was at its zenith. Uh, I got to meet a lot of those guys mm -hmm. because they were starting to cover stuff in the black community. Before that, the downtown papers didn't cover anything in the black community. Right. I we used, I used to, they used to, when we would sit around uh, between assignments and just chew the fat about how things used to be in the yeah. old days. Right. And they would say, if they got an assignment that they didn't quite know what what com what the community the demographics of the community until they got there mm -hmm. and discovered that oh this was a, it was a black community right. they had a code name for that oh, okay they at least at the sometimes they did they had a code name it was called blue okay. so if they got there and saw it was in a black community they know that the paper wasn't going to print it print it I see so they would get on the radio and say this is blue and okay. say well come on in. And yeah. that was that was the end of that, uh, but yeah, mm. but the civil rights movement changed all of that. It mm. Well, that. It, it it did change all that. This is a totally different subject, but this 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 project sixteen nineteen project, you know, oh, sort yeah. of uh, uh, talks about that as, yes. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just uh, basically omitted from uh, any kind of uh, 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 cultural di discussion on a. Oh yes, know, yes. Uh, uh, you know, whether it was in the mo movies or, or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, we just didn't uh, 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 appear. You know, That's right. You know, right. magazines, yeah, TV, TV, yeah, yeah. anything oh, like whole that. Whole works. You didn't, you didn't see us. We were us. just blocked out. Yeah, we were. We were blocked out for yeah. three hundred years. Basically. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And uh, 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 up until uh, this time now, when uh, we we're able to um, express ourselves into. Uh, uh, see ourselves reflected in the culture, you mm -hmm. know, the larger culture, you know. Things seem to be going backwards. 
which is well they're trying to go backwards it's going back yeah, they're trying to go back <laughs> they're trying yeah, it's going yeah. to yeah yeah well, two uh, steps up one step back one step, yeah right yeah. right uh, i think we're still moving in the right direction yeah it it's it but they they got they're going to pause they're going to they're trying to hit the pause button uh because i've talked to some of my uh counterparts in the business uh they're still in the business still working mm -hmm. you know mark gale you know mark gale uh he works at the post uh but he's a independent contractor now he retired as a regular staff photographer you know mark mm -hmm. and uh, uh but they brought him back to be a picture editor when the picture editor before him retired mm -hmm. and they, he was only supposed to do the job for just a short period of time until mm -hmm. they found somebody but he did such a great job that they didn't bother to look for anybody mm -hmm. so they just made him an independent contractor and they oh, pay him okay. you know the bucks he doesn't get the benefits that he got as a staffer but still he's there and he's there all the time on a mm -hmm. regular basis and uh, he's he has seen the changes that have taken place in the business uh that they, they've re, they've, a lot of newspapers have reduced their staffs and you know who's going to be the main people personnel that will get knocked out <laughs> in those reductions yeah. and they do and so uh, uh the post has i think they they have maybe three black photographers on staff that's only because there there are people in management positions that have a different mindset have the right mindset and uh but there are other places where that there the black folks have been cut out of the staff a, a lot and of course at the sun times they just got rid of their whole in, in photographic staff and uh there's nobody of color in the photographic department at all period if there's anybody i don't know if there's anybody there you know it's, it's really terrible the way things have gotten yeah i'll tell you uh i need some update really on how things are you know yeah. right now since there have been so many changes in the business itself you know the yeah. downsizing of the newspaper yeah you know the downsizing of the staffs and all that kind of well, stuff you and, wanted to say something mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> there was i I'll just say something and come back. Uh, I'm sitting here, and I think, and I know the history of each person. And so I just want to like give you a glimpse of what I see in Howard, Bowie, and Bob, but personal memories. For instance, give me an example. So, how would I describe each one? Well, okay, how is a professionalist. How how can light light? Yeah, yeah. He can light light. Yeah, yeah. And he has that enthusiasm when he's out, you know. Yeah. Every one time we were covering a political event, Dan Walker, and he was the things were not right there. And I said, how we have to take lemonade, make lemonade? And how it said we took other side of the stage, everything easy. I want to see your lemonade. How you snoop it? <laughs> you remember these things, and I, I don't. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and he was always. You, you look at photographs of how it working. You know, we we all have these cameras and these, but how it was always. This camera here, but his eyes there. You, you look at look at the photographs. The ones I'm taking, everybody's taking. And you see, it, 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 and I'm impressed with that. And and only. Uh, I love eagles, okay, I love eagles more than anything. And so this one gentleman was telling me about an owl. It's better than eagle. I said, no, there's nothing better than eagle. I said, so what makes an owl special then? He said, uh, they're silent hunters. They, they have such a hearing and, and, and eye coordination. Uh, and that were two legs, the back legs. And, and so when they make their move, they have it. It's too late to guide. And how is that? I mean, uh, uh, Owen is, has that precision. He's there, he's like the sun, that big noise. <laughs> but very powerful, very effective. You know? And, 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 and you look at his work. And I've been photographed beside, well, each one, but I've been photographed beside him. You know, stand beside him, stand beside him, and, and photograph the same thing. Like the, the Elijah Muhammad's, uh, the, 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 the Nation of Islam uh, guards and things. Right, uh, right. And we had, this one, we had this one person <laughs> said there, I photographed. And same thing, 
and he got a moment that I didn't get. You have to marry me, respect, love that. Yeah. And then how? I mean, uh, oh, we we did a a, a, a speech one time at a university, mm -hmm. and 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 the first time it's ever happened to me, you know. And they flew us back in the state oh, the private yeah. plane. Oh right, right. Yeah, and then had limousine service for his airport. And I'm thinking, you know, I, we, we, we were blessed to do a personal job. They were pleased, but I'm thinking, you know, we deserve that because all that work, and then you, after that, you just knocked out. Yeah. And, and you, you don't have to worry about, you know, lunch and things. And the legend, the legend, he's just, uh, he's just all, he's all his spirit tied up in wood. I mean, he's just, it, 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 you know, we ever read a battery, what do you call it, you know, the endless, <laughs> oh. of him. And he always preached this, this thing called love, you know, kindness and love, and, and, and go beyond, you know. And and, and we, we, we did these seminars across the country, in New York and Texas, called Black and White. <laughs> really? I didn't know about that. Oh, yeah, that. Black yeah. and White. And one, one time, with, with digit, with the, with people stopped using the uh, slides, and start <laughs> using the... Uh, the digital. digital. Uh, you know, I, I was one student by the genius, and he put together our speech. And he, mm -hmm. I, and I had a class the night before the Thursday, and we flew to the place. And so we got there, and we started. And we started. They, they plug it in. They give us this introduction to everything. It's really wonderful. There. And about five, ten minutes into the presentation, the thing just goes cool, cool. You know? And what are we going to do? So we do this. List. And then they did it happen again. So we started the thing called uh, the quick draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had yeah. to do the quick draw, you know. Oh, with the camera and the cameras and these. Yeah. And they would, they, I don't know if the, the conference was still going on, but they, they did that for years. Yeah. <laughs> and so we, you know, we did those other things. Yeah. But Bob is, uh, you know, you know, one of the things I, I admire is the faith, you know, the faith, and put that faith into action, and 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 and, and how each person consistently is there. For others, and give it the best of, of all they do, and you see that. And, and I think, to me, you know, I, I, I think about all these things. All these things. I think, as I was saying, experience always be know how. Hmm. Experience hmm. will always be know how. And the little tips you give people, things of this nature. And that, but your your light doesn't make noise; it shines and affects. And and, and for me, the the hate you hang with. And say that these are my brothers, these are my friends, and these are stage. Uh, that's it. That's that fuels my journey. That's what keeps me in flight. Yeah. You remember oh talk about side by side. Do you you remember it, don't you? I, mean, I still want to smack you. <laughs> the guy was drowning in the Chicago <laughs> River, and we're running to get that. We were, you know, right by the paper. And he was and, so kind and loving and sharing. <laughs> That's disgusting. I had to think about that. Howard, can I borrow your 200 millimeter lens? <laughs> <laughs> and he got the shot? Yes. I, get, I loaned him my 200 millimeter lens. Yeah, he's always been an agent. And he got the shot. Here we are. I think it was a headline. Yeah. In the paper. Yeah. So you had the best shot. <laughs> and I didn't. But I, you, you were, you're such a part of that, though. If it wasn't for you, we would have had that. <laughs> that, well, that was that, embarrassing. That, that was before they, yeah, the paper merged the uh, closed Right, out. yeah. Okay. So there okay. we are at the same so, yeah, building, yeah, and he yeah. processing his film, and he had the shot, and I loaned him my 200 millimeter yes. lens. I learned yeah. a lesson there. This <laughs> <laughs> blessing continues today. <laughs> yeah, well, right. This guy here, whenever he would show up on a, on a scene, and I had been there before him, the minute he came on the scene, I said, oh, uh -oh. Lord, <laughs> he's already moved it up another notch. <laughs> and now, what am I going to do? <laughs> so I, he put me on, he didn't know it, but he put me, he put me on notice. And we got to get a step up this game now. I know it. <laughs> Uh, he's gonna be in the right place. Yeah, watch. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know. and that's what it is. Sometimes you can yeah. be at the same place. Yeah. Side by side. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I won a prize with it. I was a fire, and this fireman looked out, and the smoke was under. Him. He's gagging, mm -hmm. and other photographers are there. And I'm the only one who got it. 
Oh, guess, really? You yeah. shot it, huh? Yeah, yeah what? Well, that was a shot. I remember, I remember that picture. Yeah, yeah. You know, that is something that most people don't don't uh, know about uh, newspaper photographers, especially uh, in Chicago, uh, uh, anywhere where you have competition. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and there's real competition uh, out. Uh, 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 on uh, these assignments among the uh, photographers uh, because uh, uh, in the next edition uh, what you uh, see and photograph there will be published in the newspaper and uh, right, right on the same day that uh, your competitor's work is being published in, uh, in the Sun-Times or the Daily News or the, you know Chicago, Chicago American or something like that and uh, and uh, that competition is real. I mean, you can see the results instantly. Mm, you know, mm, a person yeah. can just be out of out of position for a moment, or, yes. or any, any little thing that can happen. Uh, mm -hmm. That'll put one picture on the front page and another picture maybe uh, uh, inside someplace. You mm -hmm. know, so 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 there's real serious competition among the photographers for to get the best photograph. You know, yeah. Uh, I learned, yes, I, I, I learned. Well, see, when, when Bob told me about working at the Sun Times, mm -hmm. my thought was, oh, I don't want to work for the newspaper. Mm -hmm. I'm working for Ebony Magazine. <laughs> and when I went to the paper, I learned that the news photographers are some of the baddest boys around <laughs> because you have to be able to just respond, just bam, right there. And sometimes the circumstances can be horrendous, but you have to be able to be ready. You do. You, and then you, for you commercial photography, that was my first love, commercial photography. And I, my analogy or to the comparison to me is I compare, and I've used this a lot, I compare a commercial photographer to a sniper <laughs> where you can get your rifle there, yeah. you take time, you may have a sandbag, uh, you got your scope, yeah, and you have yeah, time to take the right right <laughs> you scope all together and ready, uh, uh, and then you you may have one shot, and you get it. Mm -hmm. News photographer, gunslinger. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Pull that quick that's draw right. and take it out. And that's and, the and, and under, under, under the worst weather conditions, mm, um, mm. the worst lighting conditions, the worst <laughs> time constraints, yeah. you know, mm, yes. everything. Uh, you get a good newspaper photographer, you've got yourself a good photographer. Yes. Someone who can pretty much cover uh, anything, any event, you know, yes. whether it's from, from, from sports to society, uh, anything in politics anything at all and uh, it doesn't matter if you have to shoot at high noon you know when the sun is blaring <laughs> down you, right. know, you have to <laughs> you have to get it you have to get all it. the right ingredients uh, rookie spirit and a pro's eye yeah. Yeah. swing it at the first pitch uh, and, and, and make something happen uh, there you go uh, yeah. you can't publish a dispute yeah. yeah. that's helped me rookie when spirit, I went commercial because right. mm -hmm. I've had to make some commercial shots mm -hmm. look as if they were shot by a photo journey <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, that, that I've made that look that way because I've had that experience. Well, right. I, I want right. to say something here that that was in, that's important because of the historical significance of it. Um, when John Tweedle was hired by the Tribune, not the Tribune, <laughs> the Daily News, mm -hmm. that was the thing that broke open the door. Mm -hmm. He was the first one to go into the downtown papers. There's a story behind that too. Uh, yeah, John Tweedle. Yes, he was. He did the production stills over at TTW, all all their television shows. He did the production stills mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. There was a woman on the board at w WTTW, whose husband at that time was Emmett Dedman. That's important because he is the foundation by which we all sit here, uh, because he was hired at the Daily News at a pivotal time uh, in the civil rights movement. I'm talking about uh, John Tweedle. John Tweedle. Tweedle. And uh, John, uh, the, the, the one she was married to Emmett Dedman, who was the editor at the Sun-Times at the time. And at that same time, the Daily News and the Sun-Times were owned by Field Enterprises. 
and they were both housed in the same building there on Wabash. And so she set up an appointment for him to come in to talk to Emmett. And Emmett at the time didn't have any openings on the Sun Times staff. But he said, I can walk you around over to this Daily News side. Maybe they got something. And he did. And he introduced John to the photo staff over there and told him what he was what he was looking for. And he said, Yeah, we can use him. Bring him on in. And that's how he got hired, right then and there on the spot. And of course, he proved that it was possible that there were black folks in the community who could take pictures that would be up to the standard of what they were doing there at the paper. As a matter of fact, John went over and above. Uh, I'll never forget two instances. Uh, and he can take an image, he could take a situation and come out of it with an image that you just wouldn't believe was, was possible. Uh, the first time I knew about was when Richard Speck killed all those nurses. And at those, in those days, the coroner or the medical examiner would walk the media through the crime scene. Mm -hmm. They did that. They did a lot of that stuff. And so that's what they did. They walked them through the crime scene where, where he killed all those nurses. And uh, uh, John came up with the shot that just nailed it. He came across a room where there was, a, in those days, the nurses wore caps. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyhow, he came across this room and in the window seal, in the front of the window, there's this lonely cap sitting there mm -hmm. at the window sill, mm -hmm. and it, and it's framed in this in the window and everything, and that's all you had, and when the paper ran it, they ran it big, and it just boom, just just nailed it like yeah. like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Another time he did that was um, when Duke Ellington passed away. Mm -hmm. and he was scheduled he was scheduled to actually perform at the Jazz Fest here in Chicago. And so they had, a, he got out there early, you know, uh, they were going to memorialize him in some kind of way. And so what John did before the, uh, the program got started, he just made a photograph of the, the empty bench in front of the piano keyboard. That was it. Mm. I mean, well, sweet. <laughs> I, I couldn't yeah. believe it. I said, "Wow!" Well, he did have a, he have a photographic eye, no question about yes, that. Yes, he did. I'm, I'm wondering, and I mean, maybe you can't answer this question, but why why did the Sun Times hire him? I mean, uh, up to that point, I imagine they had a policy of not hiring black people. You know what I mean? Well, so while the that was sudden, the second one. The, the, yeah, I, I was, was I, the second I, one. No, I was Twitter was the first. That was the second. No, I'm, like, exactly. You can't replace Twitter, but I was that. No, what I'm saying is that uh, yeah, they, they did Twiddle, a good job. They they, they hired Twitter. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, I, I know how it happened. Um, I was a member of the Illinois National Guard. I was part of a photo outfit uh -huh. in the Illinois National Guard. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, Bob Langer was in the same unit, National Guard unit. Mm -hmm. He had just left the Tribune because. Uh, the boss at the time didn't want to put him on the street because Lincoln right. wanted to shoot with 35. Right. And the Tribune oh. was still using 4x5. Wow. Right. I forgot the guy's name. Wow. He, Al Matson. Huh? Al Matson. Yes. He was the, he was the head yes, of the time. Yes. Yes. And he told Bob, he said, if you want to shoot 35, you're not, going, you're not going on the street. And so Bob, you know, he went to the Sun Times editors and said, hey, can I come to you guys I'm, because I want to shoot, you know, and I want to shoot with 35. I said, yeah, come on. So they brought Bob on. Now, when the Sun Times started to be understand they had to be on prime time because Tweedle was already there at the, at the Daily News proving that it was possible. Uh, then the Sun Times editor said, well, we need somebody on our side. And so Langer, I don't know how he found out they were looking for a black photographer, but he found it out. And he called me at home. He said, get your stuff ready and bring it on down and show it to them because they're looking for somebody. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, come on oh, down. Wow. And so Langer opened the door and I walked in. And that's, that's all the rest is history. That's it seemed like the newspapers had... had uh committed themselves to yes hiring up they like they had they, they made the commitment mm -hmm. and they just didn't know who they were going to find because they didn't know anybody 
They had no idea who they were going to find. The well, you, you're, right, you're right about that. They uh, didn't. It's they, unfortunate that this has been educational for me to learn about you guys. Yeah. Yes, well, it has been. It has so we been. Could, uh, but I, I couldn't have a discussion like this without mentioning John Tweedle because yeah, John he, he was the, the foundation. Yes. Uh, well, he was he was he was ready for when when he got his call. Yes, you know he I mean? was ready. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Like ready. like the like the rest of us were yes. as yeah. well. Right. You know? Yeah. So, the first time right. I met him, you know, coming to Chicago, I was covered. It was a situation. I to get go crazy. They did, and I was between the police and the people, and, <laughs> and the people were, uh, you know, and so I was. And this guy, this 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 bag comes and knocks me out of. Out of, out of place. We gotta wrap it up. And, and since, you, since you like, uh, you like Nikon. He knocked you out of here. <laughs> okay. Oh, what was okay. that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It's a, it's a mug. That's scary. That's a, that's a mug. Oh <laughs> man, that's, you scared me half to death. Especially when they hit that glass. Yeah. And of course, uh, Marva, she'd come in here and, and yeah, she'd have a fit. Oh, I know she would. Have. <laughs> I know. I got one at home that would have a fit too. That'd be a full journalistic moment, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. Uh, we're so wrong, but I just want to thank, thank you so much. Um, we're gonna have to wrap. Wrap it because I gotta get going. We should. Oh, uh, Two eyes of blackness. We want to get that. Um, or maybe maybe we get we do it on, on another. Uh, oh, I mean for for us to be talking about stuff. Yeah, we should have okay. gotten to that. Um, we can do more. Well, time. well, well. Yeah. It, it doesn't really matter. You can add this in at any time. You know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is this is this is been helpful and we can use this among yeah. other things that that, that, yeah, yeah. that we'll just, have. Just like know? when they shoot movies, it's all done in parts and segments right, right. at different times. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this, this and then they added it all back mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. This was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to thank you guys. Well, I want to thank you because yeah. but we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you because you started all this 50 yeah. some odd years ago. Yeah, well, and, it's all uh, things happen. And, you know, it's interesting how things do occur because we, it didn't happen before, you know, what happened and it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, because of the weather. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And right. you know what's interesting? Not one train has come by. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It did? When? <laughs> we didn't hear We had uh, at least one metro and one train. We didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. <laughs> I didn't hear it.